Hey guys, welcome back to the front line. Uh, it's your girl Shamar, and uh, we're gonna get back into uh, why Rachel is weeping, right, guys? Uh, we talked about how Rachel is the only one shown outside of the books of Ruth and the book of uh, Genesis, right? How she is spoken of by the prophet Jeremiah, right? Um, how we also see her in uh, the New Testament mentioned in Matthew and Revelations. Why is that? We're still digging on why that is. But Rachel is weeping for her children, right? We found out that she's still grieving a hundred years after the invasion. So why is she still grieving? We found out that Rachel's linked to the Northern Kingdom's gods. Now we know why the creator says Judah and Israel separately, right? Let's keep going. Let's talk about that exile, right? We know that Babylon invaded the Southern, right? Which ties us to the book of Esther, right guys? Right. That ties us to the book of Esther because Esther is in exile. She's uh, now under the Persian control, right? Due to the Babylonian invasion. Okay. So let's keep talking about uh, Rachel. See, this person's going to make the mistake right here, too, and classify this as the Babylonian invasion, but it's not the Babylonian invasion if we're talking about Rachel because Rachel's kids were affected by the Assyrian invasion. So hold on to that. They keep trying to play us with Jeru, with Israel being under Babylon, but it's not the case. And I may have made this mistake, too, you know, in previous episodes because it's very confusing, right? All right, so let's read this. So, uh... It says Western Christians have had a lot of trouble identifying the depth of panic and pain of the Babylonian exile, which one prophet compared to a mother losing her children. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Rama, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. All right, it says here, Rachel, the wife of Jacob in Genesis is here symbolized as the national mother, uh, disconsolate, watching as her children, vulnerable and defenseless, are plundered and pillaged and then taken a thousand miles away to Babylon and, and they're taken to Assyria. So they're mixing up the two uh, invasions. All right. Uh, it says, surely these children are no more. Okay. Exile was the trauma of the Old Testament, and we dare not underestimate its impact. Uh, moving to Babylon wasn't just a setback and inconvenience. The Israelites believed they owed their existence to God's irrevocable promise to Abraham of countless descendants and a perpetual kingdom of their own land, um, the land of Canaan. That wasn't promised to uh, that was promised to Abraham's seed through Sarah. Uh, that promise was confirmed through Israelite story and a series of steps beginning with the, uh, I'm trying to figure out why did I include this article? Ah, here we go. Let's fast forward down here. All right. The first major crisis came around 930 BCE when God took the nation of Israel from David's grandson, Rehoboam, and divided it into the northern and southern kingdoms. Uh, the northern kingdom eventually fell to the Assyrians in 722, leaving only the rump state of Judah to the south. And so the bulk of the promised land was no longer a po Israelite possession. And the chosen people in the north, why is it saying that? The chosen people in the north were never heard from again. Didn't, the to didn't Rachel say she was crying because her children were no more? Is this article not letting us know that this affected the northern kingdom? Because we see here that it's the Assyrians tells us here this is affecting the northern kingdom, right? Hold on to that. Remember, it's Assyria that takes Israel. Babylon takes Judah. Let's keep going. 
All right. The ancient promises were beginning to unravel, but at least there remained a remnant. The nation of Judah. Really? Hmm. But imagine if, if an invading army took control of the western two-thirds of the continental United States, deported many of its residents to South America, <laughs> and erased state lines, leaving intact only the states east of the Mississippi River. Sure, we can see an upside. Do we really need Texas and two Dakotas? But the drastic change would be rather traumatic nonetheless. Now, this sounds like something that really happened, even though they're trying to inject this as a hypothetical, um, just for you to have a visual. We are talking about the Americas that this happened in. So this article is just being funny right now by using it as a quote, you know, uh, example. No, it's telling you the truth in it. But let's keep going. All right. But the drastic change were right here would be rather traumatic nonetheless and result in a lot of soul searching about what it means to be an American, especially if, be if you believe this is God's country. But the worst was yet to come. In 586 BCE, after a decade of struggle, the mighty Babylonians under the dreaded King Nebuchadnezzar exiled a portion, a portion of the southern kingdom after destroying Jerusalem and burning the temple to the ground. Now, see, here's the difference. The Assyrians wiped out everybody. Here, the northern kingdom is never heard from again. Okay? Everybody wiped out in the northern kingdom. All right? But down here, only a portion of Judah was wiped out. I wonder why. Anyway. All right, it says Nebuchadnezzar exiled a portion of the southern kingdom after destroying Jerusalem and burning the temple to the ground. The temple, mind you, God's dwelling place. Says who? This temple that Solomon made where he was burning incense in it? The same incense the creator says stink? Let's keep going. Oh, not to get off track, guys, but the incense tree was found here. I found that, too, when I was doing the This is the Place and We the People search. All right, let's keep going. Now, the chosen people have no land, no king, and no temple. That's just another way of saying that God has abandoned them. The exile is Judah's tragic story. The reference point of the past that moment that would now call, color all others and that needed to be processed. It says here, how could God let this happen? How could God abandon us? Because we turned on our covenant. What do you mean? Let's keep going. Here's what I want y'all to pay attention to. Remember, this is Judah's fate. This ain't Israel, the northern kingdom, Ephraim's fate. This is Judah. All right, y'all. They playing three card Monty on y'all. I hope you paying attention. The people of Judah did return from Babylonian captivity due to the policy of the conquering Persians of resettling the people that the Babylonians had deported. So that's good news. But the Persian Empire did control the land of Judah for the next 200 years. And during that time, the question shifted a bit. All right, but pay attention. Who did this for them? The Persians. But Shamar don't know what she's talking about, right? Shamar just want to throw dirt on Esther's name, right? And Mordecai and the honeypot harem. But wait a minute. Why was they trying to get Esther up under Xerxes, the Persian king's nose? Was it so that they could come back out of exile? Was this what Judah wanted? Shamar don't know what she's talking about, though, right, y'all? Only Judah came back under the Persian control. Who had the ring, y'all? Who had the Persian ring, y'all? Man, listen, I don't be playing no games around here. You better do your stories. Get your stories straight. Do your research, y'all. This is why they put Esther under Xerxes' nose. So they could come out of exile. They needed that ring, didn't they? 
They needed to come up out of exile by any means necessary. Esther was going to marry this foreign king. Okay? Now, is that one of our laws from our creator, that we should give our daughters to men of other nations so that we could get back home? Huh? Or was the creator supposed to bring us out of exile? I thought the creator was supposed to make a highway, not Esther and Mordecai, some man named after Marduk. Man, listen, I told you that ain't our book. I told y'all this ain't our queen. Look what she did, y'all. Smoking gun right here. The only people to come back out of captivity were Judah. Ephraim has never heard from again, y'all. No wonder why Rachel is weeping. They are never heard from again. Only Judah gets to come back because Esther dropped it like it was hot. They got the Persian ring. Remember, y'all, is my story not adding up? Do y'all see it or am I making this up now? Queen Esther, Queen Esther, the honeypot. This is espionage, guys. This is, this is 007 stuff. Judah. Yeah, y'all gonna see it. I'm gonna make sure y'all see it because my mother's gonna empower me to help me get this so that y'all can see it. Trust me. The Babylonian invasion affected who? Judah. Who has Judah in possession? Persia. Who married the Persian king? Esther. Somehow they come out of exile, y'all. Mordecai's got the ring. Ha! <laughs> Bang. I hope I put that story together real good for y'all. I hope y'all understand why Rachel is weeping. Because the northern kingdom has never been heard from again, y'all. OK, this is just Judah. Scepter will not depart to who? Shiloh, the rightful ruler. All right, guys, I hope I put together for y'all why I got a problem with the book of Esther. All right. At some point, I'm going to show y'all why I got a problem with the book of Ruth. These are the two ladies they have given us, guys. They done threw us a bone. Talking about these are your righteous ladies, I wish. One marries a man from another nation, and one is a foreign woman, a Moabitess, marrying a man from our nation. And these are the women we're supposed to look up to. These foreign women, these Barbies, guys. I think not. Where are our books, guys? Ephraim. So Rachel is linked to Ephraim. Who else is linked to Ephraim while we talking about stories of women? Right, guys? I told y'all, we got books missing. We got books missing. But before I get to that, we're going to go to this one right here. Israel and Judah. Difference between the two kingdoms. I'm going to call this episode the two kingdoms. I need to write this down. Rachel's weeping, the two kingdoms. All right. Israel and Judah, difference between the two kingdoms. When Judah and Israel were one, when people of Israel asked God for a king, the nation officially became a kingdom. But God warned them that it would become, that it would come with its challenges. The Great Divide. In about the 10th century BCE, something took place that dramatically affected the people of Israel and still affects them today. What was it? It was the Great Divide, which split the people into the kingdom of Israel and Judah. So we got two kingdoms now, right, guys? So 1 Kings 12, 16 through 19 tells us, And when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, What portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To our tents, O oh, Israel, look now to your own house, David. That's the house of Judah. This is why they're saying this. Israel is telling them we don't have a portion with David. Our house is over here. Ha. Huh. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. 
Oh, yeah. The kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Remember, I said to y'all, why does the creator keep saying Israel and Judah as if they're not one in the same? Let's keep going. In that day, there was a great dispute in Israel, the nation chosen by God, about who was to become king. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, was rightful heir to the throne and reigned after Solomon's death. Rehoboam was a servant who rebelled against Solomon. Sorry, Jeroboam. The ten tribes of Israel, sorry, Israel made Jeroboam king, and the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, along with the Levites, remained with Rehoboam. The split was prophesied by the Lord because of Solomon's sin. Yeah, Solomon's sin. Solomon did a whole lot. And uh, newsflash, guys, y'all better go back and look at the rightful ruler. Didn't nobody appoint Solomon besides David. The creator appointed Saul. The creator appointed David. He did not appoint Solomon. All right. For his will. All right. The northern ten tribes. Who's the northern ten tribes? Under Rachel. Rachel's weeping. Let's keep going. The northern ten tribes keep the name of Israel. What? They did what? They kept the name of Israel? The once unified tribes of Jacob were now two nations. They were two houses or two brothers, if you will, that had become enemies. The prophets wept over her fate. Who else wept with the prophets? Rachel. They were a people of God after all, but their pride and hunger for power took over. All right. Difference between Israel and Judah. We see through the rest of the Old Testament how these two nations fought with one another. They each became strong and independent and created two distinct lineages in history. Each had their own kings and even their own prophets. Check that out. Sadly, also both Israel and Judah fell into captivity, although to different powers. What did I just tell y'all guys? They are they not in the same captivity. And at different times, God sent the Babylonians to capture the house of Judah. He sent the Assyrians to capture the house of Israel. Are you an Israelite? Or are you a Judahite? <laughs> And while the Babylonian captivity of Judah lasted for a period of 70 years, really short, right? Because they got that ring. They done came on back. They done put the honey pot up under them, up under Xerxes. But don't nobody want to listen to Shamar. What does Shamar know? I'm following this goddamn history. You better believe that. Israel never fully came out of the Assyrian captivity. Activity. The Samaritans were considered half-breeds from the house of Israel, but many tribes were considered lost. Israel never fully came out of the Assyrian captivity, but Judah sure did. They came up out of that Babylonian captivity, didn't they? Yeah, they found a way, huh, guys? At first, they were known as the Diaspora, which is common name for the Jewish people who live away from their land. Eventually, the northern tribes became the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Judah is not in that. Guys, what did I tell y'all? Y'all think I'm joking. <sighs> Let's keep going. Because the two houses are mentioned by uh, who? The kingdom line of Messiah had to come through Judah. Remember, Leah got that holy grail. <laughs> they pushing the JC on you. Who's behind that, guys? Mm, it's going to blow y'all mind. Remember, it's Levi, Judah, and Benjamin. I link Levi to Rome. Judah's still on the throne, guys. I'm trying to tell y'all something. Mm -hmm. The father, the son, the prodigal son. Like I told y'all, why they mention Rachel? Because they got to mention Rachel in this hijack book. The prodigal brothers, Israel and Judah, 
I like this little article. It's giving y'all a lot of information. The southern kingdom of Judah is like the firstborn who never intended to abandon the father. The kingship rested with him. Judah carried the lineage of the great King David and King Solomon. Oh, these kings that the create ain't rocking wood. What I told y'all about that, the carcasses of the kings. Biblical history shows us what is going on with this thing. Biblical history showed us that Judah remained closer to God, sorry, to the Lord in his ways, even though their hearts were far from him. This lays out the northern kingdom of Israel to be the younger son. The prophet Jeremiah tells us in great detail, sorry, detail, that neither Israel nor Judah were perfect. Both had evil hearts, but it is Israel who first went out and sowed their wild oats and chose other gods and foreigners. Doesn't it sound like the younger son who committed many sins in a foreign land? It was Israel because Balaam tricked Israel. Where's Balaam from? Moab. Who's from Moab, y'all? Ruth. Remember, y'all, told y'all, it started back with the book of Esther, but it pulls back in Ruth. Ruth is a Moabitess. Okay? And I told y'all, Balaam, you couldn't curse Israel. So what did Balaam do? He sent the, the woman to seduce the men. We'll get to that. I'm taking y'all on one heck of a journey. But we're going to stop it here because I don't want the episode to be too long. But I want y'all to recognize the difference in the two nations. Because Rachel's only weeping for one. Much love to you guys from the front line. It's your girl Shamar. See you next week.